Hi, I'm Donald, a senior consultant for Full Proxy here in the UK. Myself and my colleague David have put together a short demo detailing the steps needed to integrate NCypher's hardware security module with F5's Big IP. I'm going to give the HSM an IP address and mask using the front panel. You may find this a bit fiddly and can use a USB keyboard plugged directly into the HSM. Also, for demo purposes, I'm going to increase the speed of this recording. Excellent IP set, now let's get a gateway on it. Now that we have our basic configuration on our HSMs, I'll hand you over to David who's going to explain the next steps. Thanks Donald. The first thing we need to do following the HSM IP setup is create our remote file system or RFS. This can be done using a Windows or Linux server. For this demo, we'll be using Ubuntu Linux. Okay, here we'll mount the disk media containing the required RFS installation files and untar them into the root directory. Now we need to install the server installation files into the opt and fast sbin directory to build our remote file system. Now we'll discover the HSM using its IP address and the Anon Kinetti command to bring back the HSM's unique Kinetti hash. This is the HSM's unique identifier. We will now run the RFS setup command against the HSM Kinetti we have just retrieved to add the HSM to the RFS hard server. The IP address .101 is the HSM. Thanks David. Now let's add the RFS server to the HSM. This allows the HSM to write back its configuration file to the RFS server using TCP port 9004. Next, we'll edit the card list file on the RFS to include the serial numbers of the administrator cards to be used. For this lab demo, we'll just enter a wildcard asterisk which denotes that all cards are permitted for use. OK, let's set up our security world. We'll use a quorum of three cards and set a passphrase for each. For demo purposes, we're just setting it to require a single card for key recovery and any security world rebuilds. Continue to follow the prompts and do the same for the remaining two cards in the quorum, making a total of three cards altogether. OK, that's us done with the RFS and HSM setup, so now let's move over to the F5 and take a look at that. First thing we need to do is check that it has a valid license that supports a net HSM. We will now create a new folder called Talus install within the shared directory. Using WinSCP will upload the required client installation files from the NCypher installation media.
Now we have to set the F5 self IP on the HSM as a non-privileged client. This will allow the F5 to sync back to the RFS server. For this next part, we'll run the Ncipher client installation script, specifying the HSM and RFS IP addresses respectively, following the installation prompts as we go. Please note that this will have an impact on live service traffic as we restart the TMM interfaces during this next step. This will extract the Big IP client installation files into the shared NFAS directory and add the Big IP client to the RFS. You'll notice in some versions an open SSH error may occur specifying a cipher complaint. This is down to the version of OpenSSH installed within the Linux OS of the Big IP itself. If encountered, as we can see here, you can manually add the Big IP to the RFS from the RFS itself as shown. An HSM slot password is not used and not required. In order for the F5 Big IP to successfully communicate with the HSM, the PKCS11 service must be running. Now we just need to check that our Big IP local hard server and remote HSM hard server are both shown as operational. You can see that the hard server is shown a status of OK. And what we're looking for is at the top of the output, the Big IP local hard server is showing as operational and then below that we have module 1 which is HSM 1 which is the HSM that we've just set up also shown as operational. That's our NCypher client installed on the big IP. Now we're going to create a certificate sign-in request on the big IP uh, with the security RSA key type of NetHSM. The first thing we'll do before generating the CSR is check the existing keys that already exist on the client hard server running the nfkm info command with the key switch. We can see that we already have 15 keys available to the big IP client. Next we'll run the FIPS key nethsm script to generate our CSR. To validate that the key has been successfully generated, we'll run the same command again, nfkm info with the key switch. As you can see, we now have 16 keys, one more than before. In order for us to use the NetHSM generated RSA key, we must first make it available to the TMOS operating system. To do this, run the following TMSH script.
We can now log into the GUI and validate the new RSA key is visible within the Configuration Editor Certificate Management section. Note the key type of HSM. Now we'll export the CSR to be signed by our in-house certificate authority here at Full Proxy. Now we'll import our CA signed certificate back into our big IP against our existing RSA and HSM security key. Certificate name can be anything you like, but should be something meaningful. We generally tend to keep it the same as the certificate and CSR itself. Click import. As we can see, that's all nicely joined up now nice and neat within the configuration. Next we'll create a client SSL profile to associate the certificate and key that we've just created. Add in the NetHSM key and certificate. And click finished. Next, we'll create a virtual server. Obviously, this can go against an existing virtual server, but for this demo, we'll create a brand new one. Give it a name. Destination address and mask, if applicable defaults to a slash 32 and a service port 443. Add in the custom client SSL profile we've just created and apply a server SSL profile on the back end because the back end web server that we're using to test is running SSL. Set a default pool, click finished. Now it's time to test. So right now we're going to browse to the uh, DNS name um, of the virtual server that we've just configured on the big IP. And this should land us at the backend web server with a secure SSL connection, as it does. As you can see, it's secured in the browser. And if we take a look at the certificate itself, we can see that it's valid. See the certificate chain and if we have a look at the um, SAN, you can see that this is actually the resource that we are intending to go to. Job done. From Full Proxy Labs, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you need any more info, please email us at the address below.